Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to kind of lean in to the geek part of geek family gaming and talk about something that's been all over the news lately. And that is the total solar eclipse that is happening this Monday, April 8th. And why am I so excited about this particular eclipse? I mean, it seems like eclipses happen all the time, right? And, and in many ways they do. The first thing you need to realize is there are many different types of eclipses. An eclipse happens when the sun, the moon, and the earth all line up. So you have a solar eclipse when the moon gets in between the sun and the earth. And you also have lunar eclipses when the earth gets in between the sun and the moon. So the first thing you need to realize is that this is a solar eclipse. The moon is going to get in between the earth and the sun, and it's going to cast its shadow on the earth. Now again, this is not particularly rare, but, but here's where it gets interesting. The earth spins on its axis, which gives us our day, and the moon revolves around the earth. So who actually gets to see an eclipse really depends on which part of the earth is facing the sun when the moon gets in between us. Another thing that makes Monday's eclipse so special is this is a total solar eclipse. Now, what, what's the difference, you may ask? As the moon goes around the earth, sometimes it gets closer to us, sometimes it gets further away. When it's furthest away and it passes in front of the sun, it is small enough that it doesn't completely cover the sun. But when it is close enough and an eclipse happens, the moon is big enough in the sky to completely cover the sun. That's why it's called a total solar eclipse. Another thing that makes this eclipse so rare is that the shadow of the moon will be passing over the United States. So how rare are we talking? Well, the last total solar eclipse that was visible in the United States was in 2017. Not that long ago. But the next one won't be visible until 2044. And that's a very small portion of the United States that will get to see that one. The next big one for the United States will be 2045. So these things aren't exactly common. And for our friends in the Northeast, the New England area, let me give you an example. The last total solar eclipse that you guys got to see was in 1970. I'm guessing most of my audience was not alive and honestly, probably a lot of your parents weren't alive either. To make things worse, if you don't see this one, the next one visible in the New England area won't be until May of 2079, 55 years from now. So depending on where you live, total solar eclipses really can be a once in a lifetime event. So if you are along the path of this eclipse, you really want to get out there and take advantage of it. Now, I'm not a scientist, but I happen to live with one. So I'm going to kick this over to Geek Mom right now, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about this eclipse. Hi, this is Geek Mom, and I want to be sure that everyone has a chance to experience the solar eclipse and even participate in some science no matter where you are. So let's break it down. First, you want to know what to expect where you are located. There's a cool interactive map from NASA called the Eclipse Explorer that you can use to find out the exact times and the kind of eclipse view that you can expect wherever you are. Find the link in the description. Next, if you're going to be watching this eclipse at all, please do so safely. I've linked to some basic eclipse safety tips from NASA in the description. And don't worry if you don't have eclipse viewing glasses. There's still lots of ways to safely enjoy the eclipse. There's a great family-friendly video on how to make a box pinhole projector with easy-to-find materials like shoe boxes and cereal boxes, linked in the description. You can also make a simple pinhole projector by punching a small hole in a piece of cardboard or using a colander or a pasta strainer. These pinhole projectors let sunlight shine through small holes, and that projects the image of the sun onto the ground or onto a flat surface. A link to a printable pinhole projector from NASA is in the description. 
If you're not able to easily get outside or you're not able to make it to the path of totality, you can still watch the total eclipse live. NASA is going to be streaming the total eclipse on YouTube as the eclipse moves all across North America. So you can look for the link to this live broadcast also in the description. There's also a free app with eclipse live streaming for both iOS and Android. It's called the Total Solar Eclipse app from the Exploratorium, and it's available on the Apple Store and Google Play. And it allows you to view live streams in both English and Spanish. You can download it at the link in the description. Beyond watching, there are a lot of activities that you can do both during and after the eclipse. With a little preparation, you can even contribute to some NASA science, no matter what your age and experience level is. So let's start with the first project. This is the Globe Observer app. With a, just a thermometer and a smartphone, you can help scientists understand more about how the eclipse affects the atmosphere. You do not need to be in the path of totality to do this. So you start by downloading the Globe Observer app and you set up a free observer account. So you should plan to do this step before the day of the eclipse. After completing the short app tutorial for both land cover and clouds, you're ready to make your eclipse observations. Watch the How to Observe with Globe Eclipse video linked in the description and get started. If you do happen to be in the path of totality and you have a smartphone, SunSketcher is another fun project that's going to help scientists measure the shape of the sun. Enjoy the eclipse while your smartphone collects the data for science. Download the app and watch the tutorial at the link in the description. The Soundscapes project asks, how does wildlife respond to a solar eclipse? You can record sounds before, during, and after an eclipse to find out. If you like to listen to our animal and insect friends, then you want to give this project a try. If you miss the eclipse on Monday or hear this after, there's even a data analyst role that allows you to analyze data and help uncover patterns after the eclipse is over. We wish you safe eclipse fun from Geek Family Gaming, but know that solar science happens all day every day. And if the eclipse has got you interested in how you can contribute, just let us know in the comments and we can keep the exploration going long after the eclipse shadow has passed you by. This is Geek Mom. Keep looking up safely and let us know what you did for the solar eclipse.